So late Tuesday, the Attorney General filed a motion to compel three individuals to comply with subpoenas that were issued and to come forward and give testimony, which they're required to do under these subpoenas that were properly served. And she did that by filing a 115-page document that supported the arguments that she believes favor her position. And that would require the court to command that these people come and speak to her. Well, they're looking at the Trump Organization and several different variations of that organization. And then the three principal players in the organization, Donald Trump, his daughter, and his son. And those are the three people to whom subpoenas have been issued. And those are the people who are the focus of this response to the motion to quash. And so the wrongdoing that's being looked at here by the attorney general is the overvaluation of these properties in certain documents that were provided to support certain loans and other instances where value of property became important for the attorney general. Based on the response that was filed by the attorney general, there appears to be a good faith basis for issuing the subpoena. And then based on the facts that they've placed and the allegations they've made in their response, it seems to me that based on my experience, the judge is going to deny the motion to quash and is going to require these individuals to appear before the attorney general and to answer the questions under oath as required by these subpoenas. The shortest route is for them to come forward and either answer the questions or invoke their rights under the Fifth Amendment. And then the AG will be able to complete her investigation in a matter of weeks or months. And you know, perhaps it's springtime they'll be done. If they're going to seek to continue to fight these subpoenas and either deal with a contempt hearing or take it up to another level at a court of appeals, this thing's going to drag out for six months, eight months, potentially longer.